really helped me transform was to see my challengers and my challenges as opportunities for soul evolution. I believe that this earth is a big schoolroom. It's like a big class and I have all these great lessons thrown at me. Why don't you go back and take another pass from little Susie's point of view? That little light inside your heart, that piece of your soul that has been on this entire journey with you. Write it through from her perspective. This, this going within word and, and finding that little piece of brilliance within you. And, and she was always there. I just kicked her to the street. She was covered in mud. She was angry. She was hurt. She was bludgeoned. I mean, she's been the brightest beacon. And uncovering her and appreciating her and acknowledging her and recognizing her has been a proud, profound gift. Hello, my name is Mafalda. I'm a health and performance coach, and this is Super Love's podcast. Today, our guest is Susan Gold. Susan is a woman of strength, resilience, and transformation. Susan's life's journey has been filled with dif diverse experience, ranging from working in the entertainment industry, competing as an endurance athlete, to now dedicating her life to helping others navigate through their personal trauma. She is the author of the book Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. Today we are talking about her experience in her childhood and how this impacts her life and her journey. And how did she use this difficult experience to transform her life for the better. Olá a todos, meu nome é Mafalda e este é o podcast Super Us. Aqui vou falar de saúde. Seja comida, exercício físico, sono ou tudo o que te possa ajudar a ser a tua versão super. O objetivo da Superas é conseguir criar uma comunidade de outliers, pessoas fora do normal. Pessoas que querem estar constantemente a melhorar e que não se contentem com estar bem, mas querem estar ótimas. Pessoas que não têm medo de lutar pelos objetivos e pessoas que querem ser super. Hello Susan, it's a pleasure to having you here with me. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this, Mafalda. Yeah, thank you so much for having here and to accepting my invitation uh, to be on the podcast and talking about the subject that I think it's uh, really important to talk. Uh, maybe a little difficult, but it's really important to talk. Um, so I'm glad that you are here with us. So I think that... It's a Yeah, it's a privilege. Yeah, I'm just, again, excited. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think we can we can start maybe with a little bit of a presentation and what uh, what brought you to the area that you are working with and um, The, also talk, talking a, a little bit of, with um, about your book. So I think we can start about with that on a presentation on the, your a little bit your journey. Okay. Well, I never thought that I would be working with other people, helping them through trauma similar to the trauma that I've experienced, and that's a very popular word right now. Trauma. Um, for a long time, we were to hide our traumas carefully. And I kept, kept mine very well hidden for years. Um, I had an extensive career in the entertainment industry, matching well-known celebrities with brands and then producing for television and for film. And I lived in New York City for a long, long time and Los Angeles for a long, long time. But I found that I've been reassigned to a very rural, beautiful area in Montana near the Canadian border. And there's a lot of peace here. And it's been a long navigation to a place of peace and contentment and acceptance to the life journey and the trajectory that I've had. I 
grew up in a very small town in central Pennsylvania. My father is a genius astrophysicist and my mother was equally as brilliant, but she didn't have a chance at higher education. She had five children in very short succession. Mm -hmm. um, and my father was a bit of a Peter Pan and he also had trouble with alcohol. The whiskey bottle would uncork very early, 7.30 a.m., and you'd hear glug, 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 glug. And my mother would cope by overeating through food. She would go to food for comfort. And back then, Mafalda, they prescribed diet pills for that issue. And what I learned later in my 20s, when my own red flags started to surface, was that she was on straight speed. Diet pills were speed. So I was raised by an alcoholic and a pill head, basically. Um, and it was not a very even steady platform. And I was in the middle of the five children and I was highly intuitive and quite empathic super empathic. I could sense the emotion in the room immediately. And there was a lot of fun, but there was a lot of chaos and there was a lot of danger. And it was very violent. And I have strong memory of it. Mm -hmm. I have three brothers and one sister, and we all have a very different remembrance of growing up in that family system. And I love my family. I, ca I care very much for my family, but I have done a lot of work to heal from growing up in that kind of dynamic or family system. Yeah. And what, um, what do you think it was the, um, because you were able to transform, let's say, this trauma in something to uplift you and to use this as uh, to to help other people what do you think it had uh, some influence on you using your trauma to uplift you uplift you instead of the other way around it took me a long time to realize this, Mafalda. So I hope it takes your listeners less time. Maybe we can help them today with our conversation. But what really helped me transform was to see my challengers and my challenges as opportunities for soul evolution. I believe that this earth is a big schoolroom. It's like a big class. And I have all these great lessons thrown at me that look like abuse, neglect, abandonment, betrayal. But if I look more closely, I see they're all opportunities for me to go inside into my heart and see the beauty of the experience and move through that mm -hmm. experience with as much love as I can muster and understand the power within my own being. And so that's what's helped me transform the most. I feel I was perfectly placed into that family system. It was almost magical. The movie could not have been written any better for me. And um, that has proceeded along in adulthood. Um, so mm -hmm. I really have great respect for all the players. Yeah, I think one thing that it's, uh, you, you remind me was that sometimes we try to forget our past, forget our trauma, and think that uh, we had, um, let's say, the worst life and we are unlucky because we had that life. But you were able to take out 
the learnings from this experience and uh, transform, as you said, transform this experience in learnings and not only in uh, painful uh, feelings, let's say. Yeah, and I think the more that I try to shove it under the closest carpet, the nastier yeah. it got. So to dive in and really explore it was very imperative and important. And it was it was necessary to talk through it to get a to get a storyline in black and white of what my history was because in my early 20s I was having similar problems that I saw demonstrated in my own home. You know, I was into I was in abusive relationships. I was lying when it was just as easy to tell the truth. I was having issues with alcohol. I was having issues soothing with food. So addiction yeah. uh, was a problem. Um, I had been suicidal since I was six years old, and that was becoming more an issue. So I, once I was able to address those issues and talk them out, I chose a, a professional. I worked with a, a therapist very early on. And it was important to get that storyline down. But what I've discovered over the years was what really shifted that trauma in the cells of my being were more somatic levels of work. That okay. means going into my body and exploring the pockets of trauma and seeing the color and the texture and the timeline. Was it current? Was it past? Was I dragging this from my ancestry forward? Mm -hmm. So once I could work that way, that's when I really started to shift. And I, I was profoundly changed as a human being. Yeah. And what do you think uh, it helped you have transformed this fear of facing these difficult emotions into courage of facing these uh, difficult emotions? I think that I was born with some of that because, you know, surviving my family and I have very early memories, you know, 18 months old is the first memory of very harsh neglect. Um, and I feel like the courage has always been there. I knew there was something awry. I knew something was wrong. Uh, I knew that there that I needed a different way. I left my family home the morning after I graduated from high school at 17. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually I went to New York City and I knew I had to push forward. And once I started to really explore patterning, once I started to identify emotion my own emotion, because I had become so shut down, almost like a block of concrete with barbed wire surrounding mm -hmm. and the barbs were turned inward. Once I understood that if I could gain the courage to go in and look at it and the layers could dissipate and soften and I could feel life almost in a new zip code. You know, it was just a, a whole different experience. That's when this journey started to become magical. Yeah. And uh, when you said that you move out uh, when you were 17, mm -hmm. did you know when you were in your uh, parents' house, did you know the situation was... Uh, not the best situation, not the best environment, or you only realize that after you move out from uh, your parents' house? I knew something was awry and something was amiss. And I knew there was some um, you know, uh, unjust circumstances. And I knew there were 
unhealthy behaviors, but I didn't understand the depth of it until I started exploring on my own in my own adulthood. And then it's taken decades to unravel all of the programming and Mm -hmm. the trauma. When I first went for help, And the therapist said, let's go back into that home where you were raised. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go back in there. But no one knew. I mean, even when I just published a book um, talking about this taboo topic of toxic family, that's actually the title of the book. It was not my title, but the title of the book is Toxic Family transforming childhood trauma into adult freedom. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go back into that house and re-experience what I did, but it was absolutely necessary to do that. It's almost like I was Sherlock Holmes trying to put the pieces of the puzzle back together because Mm -hmm. the experiences there were reflected and mirrored in my adulthood. And until I could open and embrace them and understand, and it's, it's a lifetime of exploration and understanding. Um, I did, I, I would have been a prisoner of the same behaviors. Yeah, I I agree with you. We are uh, forever learners and we are always trying to improve ourselves and to improve in, in your case and, and also in, uh, in my case, trying to also help others to improve themselves. Uh, and, and one thing that, um, that you were saying that you knew that something was not right when you were still in your parents' house, but you didn't know the depth of it. And I think one thing that is sometimes is not so easy to understand is when we are in the middle of the chaos, it's hard to understand Uh, what could be other possibilities because we are in our own reality so it's hard to understand if this is the normal because yesterday was the same because two days ago was the same so sometimes it's hard to understand what is normal and what is not if this is the only reality that we know and uh, and then you repeat that because yeah. that's what's comfortable. That's what's yeah. familiar. Even though it's toxic, it's painful. That's what you know. So you create it. Yeah. yeah. It was that way for you too? You had a similar experience in your, within your own family system? No, luckily, no. I had a um, pretty stable uh, family background. Of course, that now I realize that some... Um, let's say personality traits and some behaviors. Uh, I can trace back to some behaviors that I saw in my parents. Uh, But, and of course that I know now try to understand, okay, what are the behaviors that I have that are traced back to my family that I think I need to improve. But I cannot say that uh, I have a, I have a toxic family, luckily, but still I can trace back some behaviors that I want to improve. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, the first, or what, what I consider that could be the, that is the first thing that we need to make to, tra- to be able to transform our trauma in um, some learnings is to be aware that we were there and then to have the courage to go there to try to understand okay what happens as you said uh, in the beginning you were uh, having some you didn't want to go back to the that situation and your you know that because it, you knew that will be painful to go there again uh, but only when you go you try you you understand that the situation that you face in the past you were repeating the patterns only then you 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 realize that okay now i have two options either i i, I continue doing the same thing that i saw that i learned or i need to have the courage to heal yeah and i think this is um it's the importance of being aware of ourselves to be able to understand that 
there is other realities than the one that we are uh, used to. And for that, you need to have the courage to, to change. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like that Stockholm Syndrome. You know, the prisoner stays the prisoner even after they're free. Yeah. Because that's what that's what's ingrained. But yeah, there is a whole nother world. I I do a little scuba diving. And when I first started scuba diving, I couldn't believe what was below in the sea. I, I, it was just this whole other exquisite, beautiful world. And that's the same journey as I've unveiled, you know, my past mm -hmm. and, and not just my own past, but in the lineage, in the family mm -hmm. ancestry, you know, I was carrying things that were ancient and didn't belong to me. And I needed to drop that heavy bag of shame and guilt and blame that, that I had been carrying. And I didn't even know I was carrying the yeah. wrong bag. What do you think it, it helped you um, releasing from this uh, heavy, from not only your family, but also all your lineage, as you were saying? So that, that really came later. That uh, Maybe I stayed in Southern California too long and was <laughs> into a little hooey, but I did a lot of body work, as I had mentioned, okay. somatic work and a little bit of hypnosis. Um, and that was able, I was able to really relax and images just naturally come up. I believe, you know, we're all a bit superhuman. We've just been sort of tamed down <laughs> for our current ride. And I, I think our superhuman powers are coming back, but I always had sensation, vision. I've even had, you know, se uh, sensatory flashbacks, um, And, you know, I always felt a little bit as an outsider. So I really explored all that in, in all sorts of modalities. I really just um, went with it. I chose to just be open yep. to what was presented and just taste and then discern. Does this feel good for me? Does this feel true? Um, and so that's how I really got in touch, you know, with some ancient, stuff and just was able to clear it out of, you know, my whole being and then replace it with golden light. Yeah. Good. What would you say to someone that um, are facing some difficult uh, things in our life and in her or his life and doesn't know exactly if this is the normal situation? or if it can improve and what they can do to improve? Well, like you said, first, you have to accept the space that you're, you're in, you're, you're aware, but then you have to accept that space. And then you have to understand that you are a being of worth and you have value and you have purpose here. And if you can step up and into that, you're going to help not just yourself and you will help yourself and you need to help yourself first, but your experience of getting through your trauma or your trajectory will be helpful to others ultimately. And that's the beauty of incarnating here. So that's what, that's what I say first and foremost, and also please don't take yourself out. You're taking the wrong person if you do. And there is much help, even if it's a trusted friend that you're relying in. If you don't have the funds for a professional, mm -hmm. um, there's much help out here and you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think uh, it's really important to treat to treat well of ourselves because we are the most interesting interest person in treating ourselves well. It's us, uh, so it's really important to to treat ourselves good. And another thing that I think is really important is. Um, 
not to compare um, the difficulties, not to compare the traumas, because even if it seems a small thing, maybe it's affecting you and maybe is you are repeating these patterns. So if you think that is something even small, you should try to improve and you should try to seek for help either from a friend or from a, a special, specially person. Uh, and I think this is really important because um, sometimes I, I, I hear that, oh, this is not a bit, a big thing because it's not so serious and it doesn't matter if it's bigger or smaller than the other person. It's your thing and it's, your small or big trauma and you need to face it and you need to have the courage to to face it i think this is also um a really important point yeah because i think we're on a mission yeah and i really in my heart feel that some of our systems that have been created whether it be our educational system our health care system, our governmental systems, even our financial systems have been broadcasting some pretty taxing messaging and have imprisoned us in our little cubicles. And so it's time to take a, a look and, and try a mm -hmm. different way. And yes, it, it is taking a lot of courage. I mean, me with this book, I got told in 2007, I had a book to write by an Irish seer. And I, I promptly, you know, was like, no, and I shoved that into the nearest closet. And then in 2020, I had back to back intuitives tell me you have a book to write, it's going to help many people. But I didn't want to write a book. I didn't think my life was that interesting, first of all. And then I called it magical illumination because that's what I feel, this journey of uncovering and, and recovering and then walking through um, to freedom in my life. I, I, t I feel like it's been a magical illumination. I don't feel like it's toxic family, you know, and my publisher wanted that title so much. And I was like, wow, that's really naming the taboo. That's so mm -hmm. taboo to say your family is toxic. How can I do? I love my family. You know, how can I say this? But, you know, I too, I had to step up this. I've been very successful in my career. This is my purpose. This is my mission. So again, I had to suit up and show up and step forward into the spotlight and say, mm -hmm. let's have a conversation about this. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I also uh, find in myself and in uh, the people with I work is that each time that we are talking about um, something that happened to us, a trauma that is related to our family, we think that we cannot talk because they are our family and we should protect them. Uh, because there is a every, all the emotions are um, upgraded because it's our family. So we tend to have more difficult talking about if it's with um, um, about about yeah, our family members what do you think you it's important or help or help you in the past um, taking make having in consideration that in your case it was a trauma related to to your parents yeah, it was, it was very hard. Like I was very angry with my publisher when she suggested this toxic family yeah. title. Um, and it took two weeks of real introspection to understand that this, this conversation is for many, many of us suffer. My parents suffered. Yeah. They were hurt and abused children. They had been raised by hurt and abused children. 
and thereby my my sister and my brothers in my own opinion were hurt and abused children so to bring the conversation forward from a place of love i mean understanding that chain it's not an accusation i'm not a victim yeah. My parents were doing absolutely the best they knew how to do. And with love, they had suffered tremendously themselves. And I'm very clear in coming from that point. And as a result of this book, it's brought some conversation up in my family. It hasn't been comfortable, but there's a little more honesty bubbling up to the surface and the possibility for authentic love because when when I've been with them I can feel the pain I mean I'm an empath I can feel the pain and I can feel the comfort I have in my body having gone through the experience and really exploring and finding heartfelt forgiveness and love for what all of us have been through. I mean, this earthly walk is not for the faint of heart. This is not the easiest planet to exist on. This is a walk of fire. You don't come here unless you're, you know, you're in for a tough ride. It's just not a comfortable place. Yeah. So that that's what it's been for me. And and for my family, and I'm, I'm so impressed with them. Yeah, I think one really important thing that you that you were saying is that uh, your your parents they did they did what they did because it was related to their experience, and their parents were did what they did related to what they they have as experience. So, is I believe that we. We all have a good intention in what we do. We simply do the the way that we know, the way that we we were uh, taught on, the way that we experience, the way that we learn, basically. And as you were saying, to be able to understand this is to be able to forgive and to start in a place with uh, with love. Because, um, as you were saying, to be able to to go on the journey, as it's not an easy journey, you need to to go in with the with love in your heart. Otherwise, it will be much harder to to go on this journey. You were talking about your all your journey. What do you think it helped you? Uh, let's say maybe relieving all these. Um, this experience that you had, what helped you having the courage and the strength to to write the book and to relive all of this? I didn't want to. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to do this. I had spent so much time and I had gone on living my life. And um, I think I was living as I desired to live for the first time in a long time. Um, when it was brought up again, you have this book to write and, and it was clear what the messaging was. So it was tough to go back into it. And I was like a bulldog television producer because that was my professional career. I made myself sit at the computer for 15 minutes a day, whether I had something to write or not. And while that worked to create a manuscript, you mm -hmm. know, the first pass of the book within nine months, I didn't feel connected from my heart to the story. So a very wise mentor said to me, you know, why don't you go back and take another pass from little Susie's point of view, that little light inside your heart, that piece of your soul that has been on this entire journey with you. Write it through from her perspective. So I took the advice and it's not so much Mafalda that the black and white of the words changed the manuscript. It didn't change so much, but my feeling 
okay. towards getting through all that I had and facing all that I did and accomplishing what I chose to do in writing this, this book and then sharing tools that actually helped me on my journey in the book that was as important as sharing my story because mm-hmm. I really want to help other people if it's possible that made all the difference in the world yeah it's it's yeah i you were trying to uh, seeing your legal susan with a place of in a place of love and uh, just that help you dealing with the emotions with the um, with yourself in in the in the present moment yeah that that's amazing Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I heard about Little Susie when I was in my 20s, way before you were born, Mafalda. There was a book um, by Alice Miller called Drama of the Gifted Child. So it was really chic, you know, to be talking about your inner child and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I just thought, oh, this is full of soup. It's just so saccharine. And yeah, I don't have time for this. You know, <laughs> I, need to, I need to do other things. This has been key. This, this going within word and, and finding that little piece of brilliance within you. And, and she was always there. I just kicked her to the street. She was covered in mud. She was angry. She was hurt. She was bludgeoned. And she's been the brightest beacon and uncovering her and appreciating her and acknowledging her and recognizing her has been a proud, profound gift. It's amazing the importance of looking in ourselves and looking to our inner child and taking care of that inner child because maybe in the past we our inner child were neglected and at a certain point of our life we just see the um, the pain and if we see the person behind that pain we are able to give that uh, that small child some love and our feelings start start to be lighter let's say they are still there but they are start to be lighter yeah i'm sure you've seen that transformation in many that you serve and help as well as yourself and and the importance is is more than i ever knew and understood Yeah. Um and can you can you describe um a moment where uh because you said for example for the book that um, you didn't want to write uh and but at the same time you you write can you describe a moment where you you knew that uh, you needed to write to to help others dealing with this trauma as you you deal with yours yeah i mean after three intuitives tell you you have the book to write and then um i knew that i mean after experiencing as much as i have and i haven't gone through great detail here but i wanted to leave a legacy behind i didn't want to just leave it and leave it unsaid. I, I feel like that would have been an abuse and a missed opportunity. I feel like I've faced a lot of major lessons. I think I'm gonna read the fine print more closely if I choose <laughs> another round here on earth after this one is up. Yeah. But I feel like this was part of the plan and If I didn't take the opportunity, I would have missed something yeah. major. And I feel that I've told my truth with with as much integrity and love as I can muster. And I'm already experiencing what it's like when I've helped others really shift just by something, what I thought was a simple yeah. experience to share. Uh, you said that um, you learn a lot of a lot of things uh, with your experience. What do you think it was your biggest learning with uh, with 
all the experience from your childhood? Oh, from my childhood? That I am, I am strong. I am capable. I am gifted. <laughs> I have incredible mercy and compassion. And that I am a good hu person, a good human being with tremendous care and love for others. Even those that have foisted some pretty tough, dark stuff on me. Yeah. So that's, that's I think, what I've learned most. Mm. And that's, that's a huge piece of gold yes. to Amazing. take away from this experience. <laughs> Queria fazer uma pausa neste vídeo para te falar do meu programa super, o meu programa de Health and Performance Coach. São seis sessões individuais ao longo de 10 semanas. Vamos definir quem tu quer ser, quais os teus objetivos e o que é que tens que fazer para lá chegar. Vamos perceber como é que podes melhorar o teu bem-estar físico, mental, emocional e espiritual para alcançar a tua melhor versão. Se tiver alguma dúvida, podes consultar superas.pt barra produtos. Podes ainda enviar e-mail para mafala.superas.gmail.com ou então enviar uma mensagem para as redes sociais. And what do you think your, what were um, your biggest learnings with all your healing journey? Patience, I think. Patience and understanding and hope. You know, I still, Mafalda, I still have issues with trust, real trust, a real trust of myself, because I know I've, I've, I've placed myself in some very toxic circumstances and to really trust myself to the core of my being and to really trust others. Yeah, I, I'm, I think that's going to be a lifelong project with me and and you know what that's okay that's okay you know if I get it great if I if I don't okay at least I'm trying at yeah. least I'm aware at least I'm awake uh, you said that you put yourself in really difficult situations what do you think it was your um your trigger to say okay I need to try to find someone to to help me Well, when it, and it, it's been steps along the road, it's, it seems like every decade has been a different theme, but, um, I've had, I've been very honest with myself, you know, when the red flags came up around my drinking and I knew that, you know, I was having difficulties that seemed familiar to surrender and go to a therapist. And back then, like, it wasn't chic. You didn't go to somebody and pay them to listen mm -hmm. to your problems. It's come a long way since then. Um, but, but just to understand, I can't do this alone. I need help and there's no shame in that. And each time I've surrendered to that and it's been repeated, it's been a gift and it's been the opportunity for a new evolution. Amazing. Thank you, Susan. What do you want to say to someone that is could be dealing with some uh, difficult uh, experience um, and don't know exactly what uh, what they should do? Yeah, there's a whole team surrounding you. There's there's a plan you came in with, and this may be a part of it. And if you can view it with new eyes and with hope and find support. But again, the, the last person you want to be harsh with or cruel to is yourself. Treat yourself like a beloved little baby or a toddler, you know, wrap yourself in a soft, fuzzy pink blanket and be gentle and get, get the support you need. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. You said really important things. Uh, the giving love to ourselves to our our inner child and surrender to to what we out to our experience in the past and don't blame ourselves for that and at the same time try to give ourselves some love uh, and as you said now trying to treat ourselves the best way that we can yeah that i think it's uh, 
some really important points, some highlights that uh, that you said today. Any um, other uh, message or tool that you want to to share with uh, with our viewers? Yeah, just that if you feel um, called, please come visit me. My website is susangold.us. It's susangold.us. Mm -hmm. um, everything is there. Um, right now, the book is only in English. It's not in Portuguese yet, but I hope to have it <laughs> translated one day. Um, and, you know, I would love to hear your story. So if you feel moved, there's a uh, time we can set up to have a conversation, just the two of us, because I think that our stories, Mafalda, are important and so many of us are unheard. And sometimes it just takes a gentle ear to move move you forward to a better place. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what I'd love to leave everyone with. And I just want to say thank you for what you are doing. It, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes expense to produce a podcast and most of them don't last very long. So you're way ahead of the pack already and the content you produce has great value. And I'm very appreciative of the platform you presented today of this safe haven for us to have an authentic conversation with the hope of helping each other. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for accepting my invitation and thank you for having the courage to to share your story and inspire others to to understand that there is other realities that uh, they they can transform their difficulties their trauma in uh, learnings and they can and they should receive love they can and they should receive love and uh, compassion. So thank you again for accepting to be here and to all your work and also your book, uh, helping others uh, improving their life. Thank you for seeing this podcast. I hope this podcast helped you seeing that there is other possibilities. There is the possibility for you to be happy and to break some patterns that are not helping you. See you in the next podcast and let's be super together. <music>